Hey guys, how's it going? I just wanted to show you this uh, radio controlled tank by Radio Shack that I picked up recently at an estate sale. Um, it's in, the box is a little rough. I believe this is from the 80s. Let's go ahead and open this up for you. Still has the original instructions. Pretty basic. Looks like everything is there. It's in pretty good shape. Oh, well, not exactly 100%. Looks like the treads are pretty nice. Well, the tread that's good looks nice. Plastic, this thing looks pretty clean. None of the uh, decals or paint is scraped off. So I'm going to find some batteries and we'll pop them in and see if this thing works. This is a controller. No power switch. Channel 38. Pretty cool. So let's get some batteries in this thing and see how well it runs. Well, it's not gonna run too well with treads missing, but we'll see if everything else works. So now that we have this out of the box, we can just kind of do an assessment on it to see what kind of issues, if any, we have. The first thing, obviously, is the treads on one side seem to have dried up, become dry rotted. They just, the pieces just break off pretty easy. It's fragile. And the tread on the other side appears to be just fine. But four grins, I went ahead and loaded this up with batteries. We'll turn it on. The remote does not have a switch, so uh, with that said, left and right by itself does nothing. There is a light that's on the front. I believe this turret is supposed to rotate back and forth and make a clicking and firing sound. So it is not doing that, so we'll dig into what's going on there and we'll see if we can't find replacement tank treads and find out if there's any other issues. All right. Gonna pull the batteries out. So this has four C batteries and one nine volt. This is for the receiver. Go ahead and remove this. Thread. Just walk it off carefully. Now I did notice there is a link point you can see right here, which
bridge looks like there's just a metal pin that holds it together. And I don't really see any, see two screws here. Okay, there's some screws in the top as well. So we'll start with the bottom one. Looks like it's just coupled by friction. This is, there's a rubber grommet right here, so that this can is allowed to slip and slide while it's in operation. fits through the hole. And the light go ahead and take this screw apart here. Take the turret apart, not the screw. so you can only put it back on one way. I'm 
uh, disconnect these. Be right back. All right, so I disconnected the orange light on the turret and reinstalled the batteries, reinstalled the antenna, just to kind of get a, see if I can get an idea of what's going on here. So go in reverse. This is the motor that's supposed to run the turret. And it doesn't appear that anything is happening. I think it's not even trying to move. So what I'm gonna do is uh, pull this transmission out and uh, we'll get the motor out on its own and see if it spins or if there's something jammed in the, the transmission. See how this part is spring loaded for when the upper body assembly is screwed down into place. Helps put tension between this rubber gasket and the bottom of the turret. Flat-bladed screwdriver. Hopefully it's not so brittle, it'll just snap. does spin freely. Right, I'm going to go and turn this on again and remove this gear. Okay. There it goes. So I just gave it a little nudge with my thumb and it started spinning. So this is interesting. It's uh, continuing to spin, which I don't think it's supposed to do that. If I press forward, it does stop, then starts again. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this off and put this gear back in. Install the cover.
continuously running. like the needs a trim adjustment which may be possible there's one internal for this control but we'll dig into it possibly there's a um, transistor that's not operating correctly as well so we'll dig into this and see if we can figure out what's going on Alright, so what I'm going to do is pull this board and see where this signal wire goes to and see if we can't figure out which of these transistors is controlling that output. See, there are two transistors here, probably for each of the uh, left and right motors. So we have green here, goes there, and looks like dark blue. Yep, it goes to the other transistor. So the brown. transistor here. So we'll take a look and see what that one is. And if I have a replacement I'll probably just go ahead and swap it out. So it appears that this transistor is an NPN uh, power transistor. I'm going to go ahead and desolder it and put a replacement transistor in to see if that works. If it still continues to do the same thing, there's probably an issue with the driver circuitry, which we'll uh, dive into that if this doesn't take care of it. 
So I replaced the transistor and that did not fix the problem. It didn't even improve. So what I had to do was do some circuit tracing. Um, I was going to put that in the video also, kind of reverse engineering the board and, and to help troubleshoot it, uh, making my own schematics. But uh, I wound up not doing that. But uh, what I did find was that uh, this, the base on this transistor was uh, basically always being told to conduct, or the transistor was being commanded to uh, uh, power that motor and the spotlight. And so this chip has, has three output options and you're attempting to control forward, left, right, then also reverse, which you know, fires the, the cannon and turns on the light. So uh, that reverse circuitry, um, which is these two transistors here, um, one of those transistors was, was starting to leak, so it tested good, but I went ahead and replaced it and uh, that restored the function uh, of firing the cannons. Now once I got that working I did find that the, this motor here which which runs this gear and this hammer here, the hammers on this drum that makes the, the firing noises, the pinion gear which is plastic was actually split and was slipping on the shaft. So uh, what I basically did was re remove that pinion, uh, clean it up really good because it was covered in oil, uh, clean it up really good, roughened up the shaft on this motor and uh, glued the pinion onto this motor and now it's functioning pretty well. Put the battery in the transmitter. You guys can kind of see how this how this works. So reverse, and obviously I don't have the spotlight hooked up right now, but it uh, its output is off the uh, power wires that power this motor. So. doesn't have any treads on. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start putting this back together and then uh, we'll uh, see if we can't find some treads for this thing and see if we can get it running again. thing is put the spotlight back on. It has a incandescent bulb in it. It's still working. Just a little foil reflector.
take the antenna off to feed it back through. is going to be springy because remember there's a spring under here that on the uh, turret motion portion portion of it Silly me. 
need to put that front on before screwing it down. self-centering. Okay. So now that it seems to run like it should, uh, I'm gonna try to find some treads. If I can't find any treads, then we're gonna try to do some 3D modeling and print some out. All right, well, I was unable to find any suitable replacement tracks for this tank. There's a lot of them on eBay that are used, but there's no way to tell if those treads are really any good or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and 3D model this. This will just be a quick run through. It's not gonna really be a step-by-step -step of what I did uh, to model these, but basically I you know, created three parts. One is the main tread, and then there's each tread that's at the end that has its own unique feature that allows the two ends to be linked together. And then it's modeled uh, into a spiral so that it can be you know, printed on uh, my Formlabs printer. Uh, incidentally, I, I sent it off to Shapeways to have them uh, print this out in their TPU. And they came out pretty nice. I'm using SolidWorks, which is an excellent modeling tool, um, pretty easy to learn. It's very similar to Fusion, um, has a lot of the same features, but it seems to just, uh, seems to work a lot better in comparing the two, but you know, it's definitely pre all personal preference. This just happens, happened to work out pretty well and uh, gets the job done that I need. All right, guys. We have the treads we modeled back from Shapeways. This is printed in their gray TPU. Um, it has a very distinct, it's got a, a fuzzy look to it compared to the original treads. Um, 
I mean, they really, it, it is a nice material, but it just doesn't quite have the, the, the right look for the treads. But, um, so what I did was pull the pin, let me see if I can find it here, pulled the master link somewhere on here. So you can kind of see the head of it right there. Pulled the master link and joined the two pieces together. And yes, printed not one, but two, just so they match. Um, they were a little expensive to print, probably worth more than this tank is altogether. But at least I have a good model to work off of and I'll be able to experiment with some of the, uh, the flexible material on my Form Labs printer. But uh, we'll go ahead and throw these on and see how well they work. Now, the right way to do this probably would be to take the master link out to place the treads on. But they can be walked on much like you would do a bicycle chain. Not too shabby, but like I said, they're a lighter gray. And they're some have a fuzzy appearance. I believe they made these using the uh, sintering method, laser sintered. Switch this on. this on the uh, ground and give it a little test drive. So before closing this video out, I just wanted to mention that uh, while I was running this thing on carpet, it got to the point where it was having trouble turning, uh, I believe it was left. Um, you could hear something uh, clicking and slipping. Um, so the way that transmission is set up in here, um, <clears throat> there's a kind of like a, a ratcheting uh, limited slip differential. You can kind of hear it clicking. So what had happened was, so there's a, a cap here and a cap here that actually retains the uh, position of these drive wheels. Um, those had, were, had basically come loose 
and so the uh, the pieces of the axle inside here are on a keyed coupler and so with these keepers coming loose it was becoming disconnected from the coupler and just spinning free and not turning this drive wheel and all it took to fix it was just to gently tap it in on both sides I used a soft-faced hammer to do that and uh, now it's back to driving beautifully so guys if you really like this video um, I would really appreciate um, you hit the like button and uh, give me a sub and I'll continue to try putting up uh, restoration and repair videos it's a fun little tank thanks for watching